Welcome to Night Prayer at St. John Shaughnessy for Wednesday, June 22nd. Before we begin, I invite you to find a comfortable space, to take several long, slow breaths, to let go of the stresses and strains of the day as we prepare for worship. The God of peace grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The angels of God guard us through the night and quiet the powers of darkness. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and to glory. It is but lost labor that we haste to rise up early and so late to take our rest and eat the bread of anxiety. For those beloved of God are given gifts even while they sleep. We have wounded your love. O God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been and shall be, is known to you. In the very secret of our hearts, you know all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. Here where the Spirit is saying to God's people, thanks be to God. How are you nurturing your fruits, your spiritual life? One of my very favorite quotes comes from Richard Rohr and it goes like this. The final fruitfulness of work is actually found by choosing and living its exact opposite the cessation of work, or the Sabbath rest. Unless approximately one-seventh of life is also ceasing from work, putting spaces, paragraphs, and parentheses around my efforts, work always comes becomes compulsive, addictive, driven, unconscious, and actually counterproductive for the self and for those around us. We also need not to work. So how are you nurturing your soul? There are lots of ways into this passage, but it seems to me that the judgment piece, which I admit is a pretty big piece of it, but the judgment piece is really something best left to God. It's not really for us to worry about. I would rather instead focus on how you nurture and nourish your own spiritual life so that you can produce good fruit. It's a little like tomato plants. Now, tomato plants are divas. 
at least ours are, they require a lot of care. They require attention. They like sun and heat. So we plant them close to our building. They hate rain, but they love water. So we have to water them, but we, God forbid they should get water on their leaves. They need to be staked out or they fall over because they're so heavy and weighty. They require, usually anyway, for the best fruit, fertilization. And so you have to fertilize them. About once a week is usually what we do. And if you do that, and it all kind of works, then you have an abundance of these amazing tomatoes. Our spiritual lives, uh, the good fruits that we produce, the good fruits of kindness and joy and love, and even the fruits of justice and energy and drive and passion, all of those things require nurture, fertilizing, care. Those are our good fruits. So what do you need to nurture right now? As we move into a more open world, as we move into a time of rest, what do you need to nurture so that you can produce the good fruits? Amen. Preserve us, O God, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Preserve us, O God, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and in our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Keep watch, dear God, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted and shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Gracious God, support us all the day long of this earthly life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. 
the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, O oh God, in your mercy grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now in the language closest to our own hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. <laughs>